The problem with publishing research on chocolate is that the press jumps on it, oversimplifying and sensationalizing the message. Uh, then the money starts rolling in from candy companies, muddying the message. Uh, but lost in all that is an important idea that the flavanol phytonutrients in cocoa do appear to be beneficial. That was Dr. Michael Greger, a physician, author, and public health expert specializing in nutrition, food safety, and public health issues letting us know about a topic that's both delicious and beneficial for your health, chocolate. Yes, you heard that right. Chocolate, particularly dark chocolate, is not just a tasty treat, but also comes with a variety of health benefits when consumed in moderation. In this video, we'll explore some of the amazing benefits of chocolate and how you can enjoy it as part of a healthy diet. From its powerful antioxidants to its potential to improve heart health, mood, and cognitive function, chocolate offers more than just a moment of indulgence. We'll dive into the science behind these benefits, discuss the best types of chocolate to choose, and share some practical tips for incorporating it into your diet without overindulging. So, if you're a chocolate lover or just curious about its health benefits, stay tuned. Let's listen to Dr. Greger describe the first condition. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a debilitating condition characterized by a minimum of six months crushing mental and physical exhaustion, and we have no idea what causes it. We don't even have a good idea how many people even have it. The Centers for Disease Control estimates that uh, as many as 7.5 million Americans currently suffer from it. And you know, we as physicians have very little to offer patients in terms of relieving those symptoms. So was the doctor able to find anything to treat chronic fatigue syndrome? So this is one of the conditions I'm always keeping an eye out for in terms of new treatments. And one of the latest they just discovered? Chocolate. Evidently, Montezuma II, who reigned the Aztec Empire 500 years ago, uh, noted this divine drink builds up resistance, fights fatigue, a cup of cocoa permits people to walk for a whole day without food. Is there any research about chronic fatigue syndrome and chocolate? Not willing to take the emperor's word for it, it was put to the test. I'm always skeptical of industry-supported research, but it was actually a pretty good study. At first glance, it looked like they were basically saying, eat three chocolate bars a day for eight weeks and call me in the morning but it was actually a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled crossover trial, which is about as good as you can get. The mad scientists over at Nestle uh, took white chocolate, dyed it brown, and then added some sort of fake chocolate flavor, such that people couldn't tell if they were eating the real chocolate or the fake. Comparable amounts of you know, sugar and fat, but one had cocoa solids, you know, phytonutrients, and the other basically didn't. How did the test work? So they were able to put people on one and then switch them over without anyone knowing to see if their chronic fatigue symptoms got better or worse. And there was a significant improvement in the real chocolate group, meaning it apparently wasn't just the yummy taste of chocolate, but the action of the cacao phytonutrients. How can we get the benefit of the cacao nutrients? Of course, you know, no one should be eating three chocolate bars a day, but you can get the equivalent dose of cocoa solids, the equivalent dose of those wonderful cocoa phytonutrients, by consuming two and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder a day. Uh, you can put it in coffee, you can make a chocolatey smoothie, or my personal favorite, you can blend it in a high-speed blender with frozen cherries or strawberries, a touch of non-dairy milk, vanilla extract, and some erythritol or some dates, and you have instant decadent chocolate ice cream. Low-fat, low-calorie, no cholesterol, no added sugar, chocolate ice cream. The more you eat, the healthier you are, whether or not you're suffering from chronic fatigue. What other conditions is chocolate good for? Chocolate. Beauty or the beast or both. Although cocoa itself is frequently found in foods like chocolate, which can contain high levels of fat and sugar, the cocoa powder itself may have beneficial effects in a number of chronic disease conditions, including heart disease. What is the best predictor of cardiovascular mortality? 
flow-mediated dilation, measuring the main artery of the arm, which is about the same caliber as our coronary arteries, is considered one of the best measures of arterial function, a predictor of cardiovascular mortality. A little bit of cocoa doesn't do anything, but a little more or a lot more gives one a significant boost in arterial function within hours of consumption. What quantity is required? How much does it take? Not much, just a teaspoon of a natural cocoa powder, which would be like a tablespoon or more of Dutch cocoa. Now, it makes you a little suspicious that the author works in Hershey, Pennsylvania, at the Hershey Medical Center, and indeed has accepted money from our largest chocolate manufacturer, Center for Health and Nutrition, conveniently located at the intersection of chocolate and cocoa avenues. What do other tests tell us? Putting together all the best available science, though dozens of randomized controlled trials, arterial function was significantly improved within hours and after weeks and months of chronic cocoa consumption. It's always difficult to tease out a fact from fiction when such powerful financial interests are involved. Many of these studies were funded by industry as well, and as in all areas of research, evidence suggests that industry funding is associated with pro-industry conclusions. But even after removing those studies funded by industry, they found the same protective effect. Any other tests? The reason they measure arterial function in the arm, rather than where you really need it, the coronary arteries of the heart, is that that would require an angiogram, which is a little more invasive. But if you were able to find people already scheduled for an angiogram anyway, here we go. Double blind, randomized trial finds that dark chocolate actually opens up coronary arteries themselves. And when they did what's called a cold presser test, where they plunge your hand into a bucket of ice water, which normally causes your arteries to constrict, but after dark chocolate, they dilated. What else do we know about dark chocolate? Dark chocolate may also improve blood flow to the heart of our kidneys. Because chocolate also contains fat and sugar, though, we have to be careful. Furthermore, most chocolate products are manufactured with milk, a compound known to influence antioxidant capacity in our blood. Even if milk chocolate had the same flavonoid phytonutrient content as dark chocolate, the antioxidant effect of cocoa is potentially weakened in the blood when milk is consumed. So not only are there triple the antioxidants, antioxidants in dark compared to milk chocolate, but the milk actively works against the effects in the human body. Uh, so eat dark chocolate and get a nice spike in the antioxidant power of our bloodstream within an hour. Milk chocolate, nothing. And if you eat that same dark chocolate with a cup of milk, the benefit is suppressed. The addition of milk even in, either in our stomach or in the chocolate itself, inhibits the within-body antioxidant activity of chocolate and the absorption into the bloodstream of one of the target phytonutrients. Any other aspects about chocolate we should be concerned with? Sugar isn't good for us. Yeah, either sugar impairs arterial function. One bottle of soda's worth of sugar can temporarily cripple artery function. That's why sugar-free cocoa improves arterial function better than the same amount of cocoa with sugar added. So eliminating sugar appears to amplify the beneficial effects of cocoa. Bottom line, although the positive effects of chocolate and cocoa products seem apparent, precautions exist when we're talking about the calories, fat, and sugar in chocolate. Cocoa powder then offers the best of both worlds. Although not as tasty, cocoa-based products with little or no sugar or fat are certainly preferred. And you can make them tasty, as I note in my healthy chocolate milkshake recipe and my healthy chocolate ice cream video. Here is Dr. Greger to give us his quick summary about chocolate. Uh, the sugar in chocolate isn't good for us. The fat and excess calories in chocolate aren't good for us. But natural cocoa powder can be considered a health food. So adding cocoa to a smoothie or oatmeal or whatever would be health promoting. But ideally, choose unprocessed, undutched cocoa, since the flavanols are what give cocoa its bitterness, so they try to process cocoa with alkali to destroy them on purpose. Uh, thus, when it comes to cocoa, bitter appears to be better. Remember, your health is the lock, and we're here to provide the keys. Keep turning to Key Health for insights that unlock your full potential. 
the key to lifelong vitality is in your hands, it's just one bite away.